Welcome to the third episode of my multiplayer survival arena game. Today we'll be looking at Unity's built-in networking system which they have named UNET. Unity has provided a vast amount of already made tools and functions to allow us freely and with ease network our game. They have provided us with their high level API. An API is a series of function and classes that allow us to create applications and methods which allow us to access the features of Unity's UNET system. The high level API in this case gives us the ability to send network messages to and from connected clients. This then goes into two paths. The first being Internet Services. Internet Services allows us to create a form of matchmaking system which in most cases requires a dedicated server to sustain. Though we are not taking this route as we are called peer-to-peer -peer networking. This is what peer-to-peer -peer networking looks like. Let's say this is client 1 and they move forward. Client one sends that then send. Let's say this is client one and they move forward. Client one then sends a network message to the server, which in this case is also a client. Then the host slash server sends messages to each of the other clients and tells them to update their position of what client one should be. Let's say client two wants to shoot client one. Client two then sends a message to the server and the server checks if client one gets hit. And if client one gets hit, then it goes, then it sends a message to client one telling them that they've been hit. Then the client one tells the server what, what the updated variable should be and then it sends messages to all the other clients with the updated variable. Unlike a peer-to-peer -peer networking, there is also a route of dedicated servers. Dedicated servers eliminates having to send to a host that is also the client. So if client one moves, it tells the server and it tells each of the other clients. The pros of working with a dedicated server is that they generally are more reliable, meaning that you will, in most cases, have a better connection to the server, which in then turns allows for faster messages to be sent to each client. Though the cons here are that this path can be very expensive, though you can always look into it. A peer-to-peer -peer system, however, allows players to connect to one another without the need of a relatively expensive dedicated server. You can, however, create your own server as Unity provides you with the tools to do it. However, it is very time consuming and very tedious to manage. So moving on to the Unity components. Unity provides us already built components that allows us to somewhat easily network our game. As well as these components, we'll also be using our own scripts in, mo in some cases to send and receive data from another client. So let's get started. As you can see here, I've updated the map because I don't believe the map that I created in the intro was sufficient enough to test out the character functions. So the first thing we're going to have to do is create a network manager. The network manager in this case will deal with the network messages and allow us to connect to other players. So we go over to our hierarchy and create a empty game object. And we're going to add a game object Oops. and type in the network manager. So go down to network manager and Add it to the game object and we will call this networking manager 
as you can see here this has all the network information that you're going to need to connect one another as you can see here this has the network information that allows each client to connect with one another though we'll deal with As you can see here, as you can see here, this is the network information that allows each client to connect with one another as well as just local host to test out your game. Here you'll see the player prefab. This is the player prefab that is instantiated when a player joins a game. Registered spawnable prefabs means that we need to register all the prefabs that we're going to instantiate in the game so the network manager is able to identify each object so let's get started with our character so the first thing we're going to need is a player identity all the objects that you want the network manager to identify needs a network identity and we're going to go over and tick the player local player authority when the local player authority is ticked this means that the client is able to control this player so after we did this we're going to add a, another object we're going to say network transform the network transform allows messages to be sent from each client so so if we refer back to this client 1 has a network transform so if this character moves then it's going to tell the network what to do with that information the network send rate is the amount of times the transform is synced with each client the higher the send rate the smoother the transform will on each client will be be careful with high send rates as generally this might restrict the amount of information sent to the server the transform sync type allows you to choose what you want to sync in this case we go with transform I have had plenty of bugs with the rigid body 3d that I haven't been able to fix on the client side so network transform has 100% guaranteed to work on the host and the clients so here we the movement threshold this is the movement threshold that tells the server when to move so if you're standing still the network will not send any messages because you are standing still and it is a waste of valuable network space interpolate movement means you're telling the server to try and guess where you're going which cuts down on the amount of messages being sent to the server so a higher interpolate movement generally means you're trying to tell the server to guess exactly where you're going which generally might not be an accurate way to go about it here is the rotation uh, this is just saying what what of these rotations do you want to send to the client to update their variables here is also interpolate rotation variable it's again like the movement is just guessing it's trying to guess what your rotation would be if you're continuing on the path that is being sent currently to the server the compression rotation you don't ever really have to deal with that is just a nicety that you can work with um, also the singular angular velocity generally you don't need to use that 
uh, maybe on physics based games that you would use this but in this case we don't need to um, we're also going to have to accommodate the head so we go down to network transform child and we're going to drag over the head transform but instead of having the rotation x we go ahead and just say x and y so we can play around with the send rate to get a nice syncing with the clients so let's go ahead and say this is 14 and this also is 14 so what we're going to have to do is go down to our prefabs and drag in our player so now we have a prefab of our player and we can go ahead and delete him from the scene. So we go to our network manager and we go spawn information and in the player prefab box here we go ahead and drag our player in there. And we're going to need a place for him to spawn so we go ahead and let's create a empty game object. and put him, let's say we put him on this side, say here, and go ahead and add a network start position, and let's call this 1.1, and go ahead and copy paces, and drag it over here and let's say let's just flip it over so they're facing each other when they spawn so once we did that they both now have network spawn points so the network manager is going to be able to pick up the spawn positions and we're going ahead and say we want to spawn around robin so it's going to first spawn here and the next person to join will spawn on this and just keeps going as many clients is going to spawn in your scene so so before we can build we're going to need to have a network manager hud so go over to the network manager and go down to network manager hud this just allows us to easily have access to hosting and joining local host games so we can go ahead here save and let's go file build settings and we've gone ahead here and add open scenes which is the only one that we have and we can go ahead here and build and run and i like to keep a separate folder for this so let's go new folder builds and let's call this build one or let's go test build one uh, save go ahead here and make it windowed so we can easily close it when we need so let's go ahead here and press play drag it over here and here we have the network manager HUD so let's go ahead here and host the game and we're going to get generally with that windows firewall you're going to have to give permission so say private and allow access so right now we have the one player and we go ahead here close this and let's join and as you can see here we are moving both clients which generally in a multiplayer game you don't want so we're gonna head and have to fix that in the next video thank you guys for watching and see you guys in the next video